In the scene after Scotty saves Madeline from drowning in the river, you can see that Scotty is clearly winning the conversation, especially from the beginning, where Madeline is in the bed and Scotty is looking down upon her. Also in the scene, she is often crouched by the table drinking her tea, while Scotty is looking up, or Scotty is looking down upon her from, being, from a, a higher angle. Um, you can also see that the angle, that the ca angle of the camera is looking up towards Scotty, seeing him as sort of the heroic figure after saving her from drowning in the river. Also in the scene, you can see that color plays an important role. S the colors of the two characters have been reversed, right? So Scotty, who has been in his maroon suit for most of the be most of the beginning of the film, is now in Madeline's green, and Madeline is in Scotty's red, which is from the beginning of the film. This can represent a lot of things. Mostly it represents the idea that after the meeting at the river, they have sort of become intertwined in a way, and they have infected each other with each other. So from now, from this point on, we see Scotty's slow, dis more, more rapid descent into madness after um, this interaction with Madeline. In this scene, Scotty is stalking Madeline in his car. The scene is interesting because Hitchcock chose not to add any dialogue and let the images speak for themselves. Sometimes the most powerful movie scenes are when a story is being told without dialogue. This scene takes place early in their relationship, so the green color of her car can resemble youth and growth. However, we can see that the cars are going downhill and take turns. This symbolizes their increasingly chaotic state of mind, but we are following Scotty's point of view and the camera is often looking downwards towards Madeline, which suggests that he is the main force of their decline. In the film Virago, there's a scene where Scotty is chasing Madeline up the clock tower. Uh, Hitchcock uses the dolly uh, technique of camera use to kind of zoom in and out of one area um, to simulate the feeling of vertigo that Scotty has, um, which he acquired when he had his accident earlier in the film. Um, they kind of show Scotty chasing her up the stairs in a spiraling motion to kind of um, simulate the fact that he keeps chasing after his desires and he can't really catch them. Uh, he doesn't catch her and in the end she does end up uh, falling off the clock tower um, which kind of destroys him in the end uh, but he finds out that it is Judy. Um, Hitchcock uses this kind of movements and the uh, camera lighting to simulate how dark and how really treacherous this action is. Obsession and descent into madness is shown throughout the movie. It truly all begins with the first kiss. Hitchcock loves to use eyes to show emotion. Scotty does this intently when Madeline is unstable. Shortly after, Scotty and Madeline run away. The camera is looking down on them while they run down the cliff, symbolizing their descent into obsession and madness. Now they are hugging and tugging each other, which solidifies their relationship. However, Madeline is wearing a white coat, which shows that at this point she is pure, but their kiss symbolized there was no turning back. While Scotty forces Judy to climb the stairs in the scene for a second chance, Judy is clearly terrified because of the realization that Scotty has discovered the truth about her having been hired by Madeline's husband. And while climbing the stairs, Hitchcock uses the Zolle shot to mimic the disorienting feeling of acrophobia. He uses the shot multiple times while Scott climbs the stairs to show that he's overcome his fear of heights while using the light brown of the tower in the shots, which represent genuineness. The, the use of this color helps illustrate the truth about Judy that Scotty has realized. Once Scotty and Judy reach the top, Judy ends up clutching the wall and gravitates towards the corner of the tower as Scotty reveals his understanding of the deception that she was a part of. The use of medium close-ups allows the viewer to see her cowering in the corner and cuts between her and Scotty allowing the viewer to juxtapose their differences in control. Hitchcock's use of close-up with Scotty highlights the fact that he is currently in control. But Scotty saying she loves Judy singles a balancing of the control as the two of them enter the same frame where they embrace each other lovingly. But when a mysterious dark figure emerges eerily behind the two of them, Judy staggers backwards to her death in horror at the sight of the figure who turns out just to be a nun. 
This suggests that Judy had ended up fully embracing the persona of Madeline and believed herself to be possessed by her great-grandmother, Carlota Valde, taking on uh, Carlota's suicidal nature.